Hi, I'm Martin Rust. I'm with the Security and Policy Institute of Professional Development here at the University of Ottawa. My guest today is Kamran Bulkri. Kamran is the advisor to Stratfor on the Middle East and South Asia and author of Political Islam in the Age of Democratization. We've been talking about ISIS and global terrorism and Canada's response to that. Uh, I wanted to shift our focus a little bit, although it's related, uh, to Saudi and Iran. And although uh, events in the media have been portrayed as heating up very quickly and very recently, uh, clearly this conflict is, is very old uh, and matters a great deal to the stability of the region and indeed to our own stability. Can you comment on those two areas? Absolutely. I think that what we don't really recognize is how, uh, you know, the, the, we've talked about the rise of the Shia. There's been much talk about mm. the rise of the Shia. Wali Nasser of, of uh, Johns Hopkins wrote a book on it. There was, you know, talk about the rise of the Shia crescent on the northern rim of the Middle East by King Abdullah of Jordan. But I think that what is not r really understood is the magnitude of the problem and how it is being perceived by players in the region, this rise of Iran and the Shia. Mm. Uh, for the first time, you know, in 500 years, uh, a, a Persian Shia power has arisen uh, that has essentially, uh, you know, blocked the main Sunni power in the region, i.e. Turkey. Uh, mm. Turkey can't act in the Middle East because Iran is in its path, both in Syria and Iraq. Mm. Uh, the Saudis are reacting, though they're trying to take up the leadership and they've really you know, surprised a lot of people by, you know, picking up a lot of the, the you know, the, the, the responsibility of security in the region um, lately with the in intervention in Yemen. Uh, but I think that what, this is a process that's going to really reshape the region because it takes place in a context when the Arab world is experiencing an autocratic meltdown regimes are collapsing mm -hmm. and the rise of jihadism because jihadism finds new space to operate in. I want to talk a bit more about that. Jihadism is, is filling that gap, the gap that is left uh, in the absence or in the wake of the collapsed regimes, and it relates to the Arab Spring as well. Absolutely. I mean, if you look at the uh, democratization, uh, you know, perhaps, you know, a hundred years from now, people will look back and say, well, it was all part of the region's, you know, uh, transformation towards more democratic representative forms of rule. Uh, but in the here and now, in the short term, yeah. we're looking at uh, chaos and crises. Uh, you know, the world or the region that we call the Middle East is not what it used to be. Uh, it's really rapidly reshaping itself. Uh, you have mm. lots of ungoverned spaces. Uh, you, when regimes collapse, and on top of that, you have uh, the, the Saudis trying to fight the rise of the Shia, uh, that creates fertile ground for, for groups like ISIS and Al-Qaeda. Uh, why? Because, uh, you know, the, one of the strategic dilemma that the Saudis have, uh, and the Sunnis in general have, is how do you fight Shia and not empower jihadists in the process? Mm -hmm. Because in a sectarian battlefield, you, have, you will find that those with most zeal, such as Salafist militias, jihadists, they're the ones who are most eager to fight Iran. And in that battlefield, you know, you can't control that. So you, you, lose, you lose control of that battlefield to militias. This conflict is not going away. Uh, and it strikes me that there are no, no quick uh, or easy solutions. Uh, what is the future of ISIS in this conflict? And there is no end game. So that's the problem. Uh, we used to think about Al-Qaeda. We were fixated on it for a decade. Mm. We missed the Arab Spring. Now we have ISIS, you know. Down the road, ISIS may wither away, metamorph, transform into something different. We'll call it something different. It'll call itself something different. We don't know. But the, the, the essence of non-state actors trying to create medieval polities, be emirates, caliphates, mm -hmm. we're going to be dealing with that for you know, many generations to come because uh, there are very few arresters in the path of such forces. And uh, what is aggravating the situation is the clash between Iran and Saudi Arabia. Very few arresters in the path of such forces. Uh, these are issues that we're going to have to deal with uh, for a very, very long time to come. I'm Martin Rust. I'm at the Security and Policy Institute of Professional Development uh, here at the University of Ottawa. My guest today is Kamran Bokri, 
uh, advisor to Stratfor on the Middle East and South Asia, and author of the book uh, Political Islam in an Age of Democratization. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you.